So many companies have this kind of specification-driven culture. This is Michael Schreg, who wrote a book called uh, Serious Play, I believe. Anyways, and he talks about prototype-driven cultures versus specification-driven cultures. You see it in companies all the time. When we go in and do an innovation audit to see what's blocking companies from being successful in an innovation way, it's, all, it's really obvious if they're, if they're a specification-driven company. There's lots of examples of Gossamer Condor won the Kramer, the Kramer Prize. This was a case of a bunch of guys flying whatever they could find and then crashing it and running out and taking a broomstick and duct tape and fixing it and then trying it again and trying it again. And they won this prize by doing that. My own, exam my own favorite example is the, micro is the Apple mouse, which we designed the technology of early on. The, is, you know, the mouse was probably, you know, the mouse was designed by uh, SRI and Xerox Park. Uh, Doug Engelbart, wonderful guy. Uh, but it wasn't commercialized. We commercialized it at Apple. And so we went through many, many prototypes. It was done from zero to ship in nine months. And we did about three or four prototype runs. This is the first prototype where we learned that the ball was going to have to be separate from the case. You know, if you pick up your mouse and push on the ball, it's separate in the case now. That's so that you can't apply too much force on the top of the, of the, of this, if you apply too much force on the top of the first prototype, the ball would skip. So we had to do it. So you'll see the balls are in our, most of my other than the optical ones still have our uh, mechanism in them, and the ball floats. If you go to the second prototype, we found that the ball was going to pick junk up off the desk, like eraser um, filings and so forth, or whatever eraser things are. And you, they would put it, push them up into the optics. Right? And so we had to make the ball removable. So if you look at most mice today, the ball are removed. This was the prototype on the left that um, didn't have a removable ball, and then we had to remove the ball. Not that it's funny how that's kind of a lame solution, but it, can, it still continues today. Um, just kind of an artifact of what we were doing at the time. But anyway, and then the last thing is uh, we, used to, we would rate uh, mice in miles to failure by taking an old turntable and sitting the mouse down on the turntable and seeing how long it took before it started to fail. <clears throat> and we'd make records of different desktop materials like glass or wood or formica and see what, uh, how that affected them. That was a long time ago. Then we did Microsoft's mouse. And we built all kinds of prototypes. You have to, and we thought that at that time, the smallest one was the little square one over there. And I thought that one would win the test when we started actually testing. But it turns out that, that uh, the bigger one, people like to kind of palm it like a bar of soap on the table, not hold it like this, where, you'd, um, where you would actually get to the kind of more active region in your, in your muscle structure. And so um, that was the, the decision. But it was by making lots and lots of them and showing to lots of people and, and doing it quickly and doing it in a kind of fashion that offends engineers, which is they're showing unfinished work. You know, they're finished stuff and they want to tell you all the things that could instead of kind of laying back and letting the users tell you what's wrong with it and then fixing it. So 